Start time, getting to know the person behind the name. Dion, could you please just tell us what you're about, what you do? Okay, I think most people, or a lot of people know me um, just purely as a person in the fashion industry. Um, but I've moved into a very different direction um, and I've started a company called Flux, which is a trends analysis company. Mm -hmm. And I work with a lot of corporate companies, helping them navigate the way through a very complex South African society. <laughs> complex in terms of style? No, no, no. The, the, um, when I say trends analysis, it goes much more than handbags and shoes, should I say, yeah. Um, I look, I really look at um, a whole lot of topics, forces, industries that, that all have an impact on each other. So everything from politics to technology to um, popular culture, youth studies, food, fashion, decor, property trends, uh, media marketing, it's, it's everything. Because I believe everything is interconnected yeah. and everything is like a big spider's web. So if you tweak one little strand, the entire web moves around. But I think we're starting to forget that in the 21st century, that everything is interconnected because we have kind of tunnel vision. So I'm yeah. trying to open that tunnel vision for everybody. Do you think it's more tunnel vision or just that everybody is just trying so hard to be, to stand out? I think it's not that everybody's trying hard to stand out. I just think everyone's drowning in information. Um, there's far too much information yeah. out there. Um, I really, really believe that. And, and that's what this, this um, trends analysis company does. It helps put um, all that information into much more smaller digestible packages and kind of it shows people how things are, are related. How do you feel about how South Africa's developed in terms of fashion compared to where we were when you first started off? Yeah, I mean, we've come on a really long, long, long journey. Um, I think, you know, it's just, it, it, it has everything to do with our, our, our uh, history in, in, in the country and our political past, but we never really had an identity. And it was really as recently as um, about 2000 where South African fashion really started turning the corner. And that's when um, brands like Stone Cherry, um, Sun Goddess, Craig Native, Black Coffee, all of those guys really, really started coming together. And what we found was suddenly, I think it was also much more sort of younger designers that were deciding we don't actually need to reference ourselves with traditional um, clothing. And, and that was what everyone was, was kind of pushing. It was like, you know, you, we, we've got to go back to African roots, we've got to do that. And people were saying, but young kids in the street are not going not to wear that, that, that stuff. So we needed to, to change that into streetwear, which we did very, very successfully. And we've, we've come huge leaps and bounds but what I think uh, the next step is is we need to kind of take the the idealism out of fashion because uh, it's sort of you know fashion reflects what's happening in society and for too long we've we've kind of put that um, burden on, on, on fashion and it's sort of meant to represent youth it's meant to represent South Africa it's clothing at yeah, the end of the day yeah. and designers actually need to make a career out of that and they've got to make money to pay rent and, and, and do all of those sort of things. So we need to start viewing fashion as a, as a, as a business um, and not just as a kind of a, a political dream or something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that, that inspires you to come back every day? What, do you, what is it that you love so much? About I think I've been really, really blessed and I think you know, it's, it's, it's a thing I've, I've, I've had so many um, friends and, and, and people that I know that have been forced by their parents, by peer pressure or whatever, to go into careers that they don't actually really want to do. And you know, there's an old saying that if you decide to do, pick something that you really, really enjoy doing, you will never work a day in your life. And, and that, that is really, really true. I mean, I, 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 I've worked in sort of a corporate environment for a couple of years, bought too many ties which I don't wear, <laughs> um, and, and I've, I've kind of been a, a freelancer all my, my life. I've, I've worked for, for myself and, and now have my own company. Um, but it really is, is doing stuff that you, you really, really enjoy doing and, and that, that gets you out of bed and you, you do projects that you really love doing. Mm. Um, just here, I'm sure you're aware that there's a lot of young people in South Africa who are very interested in going mm. into fashion yeah. and trends and all of that. What advice would you, would you give to, to young people who would like to follow that, that path? Um, I've got lots of advice for them. <laughs> um, because I see people always going into those professions or careers for the wrong reason. Um, you know, they want to see their picture in Heat magazine, they want to buy a bling car, um, they just kind of see the glamour, glamour, glamour of it. 
Um, and you'll find, especially in, in fashion, a lot of the fashion colleges, there's a huge dropout rate in the first year because people go there and they think, well, I don't know, we actually have to work for this mm, stuff. Mm. And, and, you know, and that's the thing. And I think I, I give a lot of um, advice to, to young designers, especially if they've, if they've finished studying and they're trying to set up their own label. Uh, my first advice for them is to have a big appetite for humble pie. Don't think you know everything until you've eaten lots and lots and lots of humble pie. And I also tell um, specifically designers, if they finished college, everybody wants to start their own label and, and do it on their own. Um, I say no, you need to go and work as an intern with another designer, specifically a designer who, who doesn't do your own style. Because if you work under somebody who does something very different to you, you learn a lot more of it. If you work under somebody that's got similar mindsets, it's not really going to teach you much um, and you know designers turn their nose up and I say to them you know have you worked on a Saturday morning in a store as a sales person folding clothes that people just come and throw out and everything and they go no you know they don't want to do that kind of thing it's um, and I said but if you have your own store one day which if you're a designer you want to do that um, you have to learn about merchandising stock flow how to keep customers uh, you know the window marketing all of that kind of thing and you only learn that um, on the on the job and so yeah it's get you you the main advice lots of humble pie and never you can never stop learning about your job mm. that's it thank you so much for chatting to us Dion okay. we really appreciate good. it good great pleasure well guys there you go lots and lots of humble pie and then you'll know where you're going thank you see you later <laughs>